Hello, Save Jerseyans. This is your blogger in chief, Matt Rooney. We are closing in on Election Day 2013. It's only days away. And we're very excited to have a special guest to talk to you about the upcoming races. He is Assemblyman John Bramnick. He's a Republican from Union County. He is district mates with the great Tom Kane Jr., who spoke to us about Senate races a little while ago. But Assemblyman Bramnick is the minority leader for the Assembly Republicans. He took the place of the great Alex DeCroach, um, and he is trying to canvas the state and drag as many Assembly challengers across the finish line to give the GOP a majority when the new legislature takes its seat in January. Assemblyman Bramnick, I really appreciate you taking time to speak with us. My pleasure, Matt. Happy to be here. Now, I know we were joking a little bit earlier when you first called. You're on the road today. You've been going all up and down the turnpike and the parkway, meeting with Republicans, trying to help candidates. What it is it? What is it about this year and about this environment that gives you so much optimism that Republicans can finally take back the legislature? Uh, the governor has been able to deliver a Republican message that people actually believe in. So we've turned a state that's a Democratic state into a state where maybe between sixty and seventy percent believe this governor has the right message. So that's really a Republican message. So we start off at the top of the ticket with a guy that people really like. Then as a result of that, we were able to recruit incredibly talented candidates because they were comfortable running on the governor's ticket. So we got a leg up in that area. And then, of course, our Republicans, the, the uh, Republican out there in voter land, is enthused about voting for the governor. So those are the three factors that I believe are the most important in gaining seats this year. And it looks like the governor strategists definitely agree with you. It was reported by the Star-Ledger today that that campaign would be reaching out and engaging more directly in three legislative districts, all of which are in central New Jersey. One was uh, LD-14, the other was uh, Legislative District 18, and the other was Legislative District 38 all the way up in uh, Bergen and Passaic. Uh, we actually just aired an interview on Save Jersey today with Lisa Geldhammer, who is one of the assembly candidates in LD18. That's a district that's right in the middle of Middlesex County. That's deep Democrat territory. What is it that you think is resonating specifically with Democrat voters in a place like Middlesex that's going to bring them out to the polls and not just vote for Chris Christie, but continue going right down the ballot and electing Republicans to the legislature? On 18 specifically, uh, you have it, Mayor Stahl at East Brunswick, who was a Democrat and now is a Republican. So he's the mayor of East Brunswick. Start off with uh, uh, Mayor Stahl on top of that uh, legislative ticket. Then you have uh, Rob Benjavenga from South Plainfield. Of course, you have Lisa Goldhammer. So what you have is a very popular governor with a Democrat who's realized the governor's message is right, became a Republican, and a district that the governor won when he ran in 2009. So put a district together which are, you know, working people who believe in the governor's message and say to yourself, you know, may maybe in their minds they realize that the governor needs some help down in track. And it's also, that was Barbara Bono's Bono seat. And that's a, 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 a interesting factor that goes into our discussion. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, she's, <laughs> I don't think there's a nice way to say it. She's been a complete disaster for the Democrats. The other day I saw she attacked Tom Kane Sr. Um, for one of the most innocuous remarks I think I've ever heard a politician say. He thought that Governor Christie was better suited for the job, that she wasn't qualified. Um, she's really lashing out in all directions and losing support, and that appears to be having effect down ballot. Um, one thing that I am concerned about, and I would imagine it's something that's been on your radar, is are these third-party groups who have been spending a huge amount of money. Um, one of them, I know, has that's been backed by the NJEA and some Democrat bosses has dumped hundreds of thousands of dollars into some of these districts. I think one of them dumped five hundred grand into LD. Uh, I guess it was LD16. Right, yeah, I think that's what the one it was. Um, are you concerned that despite the fact that the Republicans have a strong message, despite the fact that Christopher Christie is personally popular, um, that that money is going to preserve the Democrat majority? 
you bet I'm concerned. I'm concerned because that is, that is $2 million of union money going into certain districts. And, you know, in my judgment, special interest money. The important thing is that voters have to remember that that's not your average citizen who's paying taxes donating to these PACs. These are union members who, uh, public union members who have a vendetta against this governor and the special interest PAC. So, as Donna Simon said, our special interest is you. What a concept, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought that was one of the best lines of the campaign. That's our special interest, and mm -hmm. yeah, they'll outspend us, outspend us, but I have to tell you, uh, the concept of giving back the legislature to the Corzine Democrats after and they pretty much blew it for a decade, yeah, I think that resonates. Uh, though you have to be con concerned about millions and millions of dollars being spent. I mean, it, 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 it's the nature of politics, and when they, when they spend a million dollars and they go negative on someone, that, that hurts. I think for that very reason, um, one of the more surprising aspects of today's announcement from the Christie campaign was that they're very optimistic about LD14. Not that they don't have great candidates and not that we haven't won there in the past, but Governor Christie made a name for himself long before Hurricane Sandy by taking on these public sector unions that are funding the PACs that we're talking about. That district is very heavily populated by state workers whose unions are coming out against the governor. What are we doing as Republicans? What is our slate doing um, that's reaching these state workers and convincing them that, hey, maybe the governor and Republican legislators have your interests in mind better than your union? Well, they know, people know that Senator Inverso, and we have Assemblyman Cook, who's going door to door, they know one thing, that but for this governor saving the pension system, the public pension system, that there'd be no pensions whatsoever. And I think when they get behind that curtain and they have to make a determination whether Chris Christie's doing the right thing and whether you want Senator Inverso there, and we have two candidates, a fellow named Haas and, uh, of course, Steve Cook, you know, to say to themselves, you know, maybe publicly they want to denounce the governor, but behind that curtain, you might say, you know, uh, the governor's right. You know, he's an adult in the room and trying to save the system. So, look, they're working really hard, our candidates. But, hey, there's no question, some of those unions are coming out with a lot of money. That's why they're on the ground. That's why we're on the ground fighting every day. Now, let's flash forward a second to, you know, maybe 9 o'clock at night, 12 midnight um, on election night. Chris Christie's been reelected. Um, we're hoping that he's reelected along with a new Republican legislature. You're going to be very busy. Hopefully the next time you come and interview with us, we're going to introduce you as presumptive speaker, not, se not assembly minority leader. Um, what are going to be the top priorities for an assembly that's led by John Bramnick and Republicans instead of Democrats and Sheila Oliver, which is what we're suffering under right now? Well, we have to clean up the mess that's been established by the Corazine Democrats for a decade. And we have to start, and sometimes we forget how bad this state was under the Corzine Democrats' rule. Uh, not only, of course, they raised taxes a uh, hundred times in a decade, we have to begin to roll back more and more of those taxes and more and more of those giveaway programs. An example would be, all of us have read about hundreds of thousands of dollars of municipal money that has to go to pay people in for sick days. We have to start with pulling back those kind of giveaways. Now, we have to change the civil service rules so we can merge and consolidate towns that want to merge and consolidate, but they can't because some of these rules that tie their hands. But we have to lower the income tax in this state. Uh, we have to start by showing business uh, that the regulatory environment is friendly to business, not anti-business. You know, there's been some movement in that area, but it, there's a, it, but the Democrats do not want to give Chris Christie any more wins, so it, it's pretty much a stalemate now. So I'm going to start by try, trying to open the doors of this state to the, to the taxpayer and to the business person and small business to, to make lives uh, make lives easier in this state. And hopefully people will look at New Jersey and say, hey, that's where we want to go as opposed to that's where we want to leave. 
Something I've been asking all of the Republican candidates we've interviewed this election cycle, and we've talked dozens of them at this point, is how you handle the tax question specifically. I don't think you'd disagree with this, Assemblyman. Um, people in New Jersey have been told by both sides in the past for decades that we're going to lower your taxes, and it never seems to happen. So I know that sometimes when I speak to these candidates and they talk about going door to door, they say, yeah, you know, we, we talk to people about lower taxes, but we don't always seem to have credibility with them. Um, you're a very charismatic guy. You're known for that trend. Um, when you're speaking to voters or when you're talking to assembly candidates and you're advising them the best ways to communicate the Republican tax message, what do you tell them? I look at the front page of the Star Ledger. That's a newspaper that is very critical of the governor. And it clearly stated that the rate of increase of the property tax is the lowest in 20 years. Now, why? because we passed 2% caps, because we, re we placed you know, a binding arbitration on police and fire that was a reasonable system uh, to cap uh, some of these outraged increases. So it's worked. So uh, people say there's nothing you can do. Uh, in order to make it lower, first you have to start by getting a hold of a runaway train. And it was a runaway train with giveaways. And now with with you know, Governor Christie would be able to slow down that increase. If you give us a majority of both houses, we can finish the job. Oh, no, absolutely. And I don't think a lot of people understand exactly how many of the governor's proposals have been blocked. Despite all his success working across the aisle, there's a number of measures, including many of the items in his toolkit, which are just sitting on the table waiting for somebody to act upon. Well, how about Supreme Court appointments? Sure. If you put a Supreme Court together that doesn't legislative, legislate from the bench, and you start to uh, place money in school districts based on uh, results and not based on a formula, that begins to uh, apportion monies in this state in a fair and balanced way. Why should a 60% of the uh, well, why should a few municipalities get 60% of all the tax dollars that go out of the schools. The bottom line is we have to fix this so-called school funding system so it reflects success and not simply pouring money into districts that have shown no success. When you're spending $30,000 for a pupil at Hasbury Park and you're not getting the results, that's not efficient use of a tax dollar. But without new Supreme Court judges who are going to have a fair and balanced approach, how do you change it? How do you change that? You know, school funding for it. Absolutely. I, I've been saying it all over um, at my website and for months now, um, and this is me, this isn't not Matt Rooney putting words in your mouth. If you go to the polls on November 5th and you vote for Chris Christie, but you vote for Democrat legislators, you're, you're really not helping yourself very much. I mean, of course, the governor will continue to do what he can. He's a good guy. He's an extraordinarily talented politician. Um, but we really can't take these crucial next steps that we're discussing right now without allies. And he just doesn't have enough right now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very heartened to hear you and everybody else that we've interviewed who's on the ballot this year uh, stating that they think that the voters are getting the message and we're starting to expand the map. Well, it, it's not easy. I mean, you still have 750,000 more Democrats. But at least the most important issue this year is that Governor Christie has basically told New Jerseyans what the Republican message is, and they like it. That is really the most important message that is that is uh, getting to voters now. You know, uh, you never know. You know, we can't predict the future, but at least, at least, we're getting our message across, and that that's at least the beginning of change in this state. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I'm a conservative guy. Every now and then we disagree with the governor on our website. But at the end of the day, I remind people, he ran in 2009 as a tax-cutting, lower government, um, even relatively socially conservative uh, candidate. 
And he's doing it again this time. He hasn't changed most of his core positions. And he's about to win by anywhere between 20 and 30-some points, depending on which poll you're looking at. It's a remarkable accomplishment. And I love it because it, it, it dispels this myth that New Jersey is a deep blue state. It's not. It's a purple state where an articulate mainstream conservative can make progress. We did get a new poll today, I think from Quinnipiac, that said that the governor was up 33 points. You know, Assemblyman, from all your years in, in politics, your experience, that oftentimes in this point in the cycle, the polls begin to contract as partisans return to their party. We're not seeing this this time. It's actually opening up. Christie seems to be growing his lead. Do you and everyone else who's tracking this very closely also get the sense that the governor is finishing very strong and that wave is possibly building? You know, I have to believe what the polls say. And therefore, I'm assuming that the polls are correct and that his message continues to grow. And that's just, that's just terrific. I mean, you know, you know, how fabulous is that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's unprecedented in so many different ways, but that's just one more way in which it is. Um, I'm a South Jersey guy. You're from, you're from Union County. I'm, I'm a Camden County guy. And even though we cover the entire state, South Jersey races are always uh, very close to my heart. Um, but it's tough down here because there's a very powerful machine. And we do know that part of Chris Christie's bipartisan approach is that he's made a lot of appearances in recent weeks with prominent Democrats, including Steve Sweeney. Um, are you worried about your assembly candidates down here in uh, LD1, LD3? Um, are they going to be able to break through and distinguish themselves and make that argument that, hey, unless you elect us to help Chris Christie, uh, you know, it's just going to be more of the status quo. These jokers aren't on his side. We are. Well, the reason I like what the governor's done, even appearances with Booker and with Sweeney, is that we want the voters to know that he's willing to work on a, on a bipartisan basis. You don't want voters to think that he is not considerate of others because in order to get Democratic voters and non-affiliated voters, in my judgment, to vote with us, they have to know that he will compromise. And I think these appearances help our, uh, our candidates. I truly believe that because they're not, they're not concerned about how this governor would act if he had a Republican legislator. I'm, I think it helps us quite a bit. Something that's very interesting about the back half of this cycle, um, and it's something which we've written about at Save Jersey, is Chris Christie's success with Hispanics. And that figures very heavily into some of these South Jersey districts. Uh, LD1 comes to mind because a large percentage of that district is in Cumberland County. What do you think Republicans and Chris Christie in particular are doing that's engendering, I don't want to say a sea change, I don't want to jump the gun here, but definitely uh, translating into a very strong performance among a community that Republicans have been moving in the wrong direction with in the last couple presidential cycles? The most important factor is he's authentic. And whether you're Hispanic or whatever you are, you want somebody to tell you the truth and you want to believe in them. So leadership counts and authenticity counts. That that trumps everything else. Second, he has a big heart and he talks about failing schools and, and helping people reach their potential. And that's an important issue for people who are either struggling on their way up, you know, relatively new Americans. And I think that helps uh, the party. It helps people in district want to run for office because he shows a big heart. He's not going to give up on kids who have a difficult uh, challenge or difficult challenge ahead of them. And that's why I think he does well in all communities. He does, you know, his polling is good across the board. No, yeah, I think he's he's winning just about every you single group. Be conservative. You, know, you can be conservative and you can have a big heart and you want to get things done. And you know, we never want to make those things mutually exclusive. Sure. And sometimes Democrats try to do that. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I think the clearest example has to be uh, education reform and school choice. 
there's nothing compassionate about the Barbara Buono approach, which is, hey, you know, if, if a small percentage, and by small she means hundreds of schools, worth of children are failing, that's not that big of a deal. It's still worth protecting this public school monopoly that really only seems to benefit uh, the teachers union. Um, that's an issue where it's entirely compassionate to take a Republican approach, to take a more balanced approach, and uh, that definitely seems to pull well with Hispanic voters. Um, so I agree with you. Regardless of everything else, authenticity and leadership and is most important because we can disagree, but if you believe what you say, and you can back it up, and and you're and you're fair about how you say it. People will people will respect you. Absolutely, a lot of people vote on that, and uh, you're right. It doesn't matter how great your message is or the quality of your ideas. If people don't trust you, then the rest of it doesn't really count for much. And so I think that that, that it, I think that rings well uh, in, in all communities. If Anyone listening to this interview right now um, wants to get involved in these assembly campaigns down the stretch. We have one more full weekend where there's going to be a lot of activity, a lot of rallies, a lot of phone banking, um, and then a couple more days on the beginning end of the next week. How do you recommend they get involved? Sure. We have a, a website they can go to, and uh, you can get to it by going to stopcorzonedemocrats.com. Is our ARV Assembly Republican Victory Committee's website? There's information there, and you can donate. You can get involved, and that's the best way to do it. And we'll get you to either your assembly candidates, your district. If you want to work statewide, we'll we'll have you work on election day. So we encourage people to call us or, or go online, and you can find all of just stop Corazine Democrats final question for you, and then we'll let you get back to all of your busy travel and uh, campaigning around the state. I noticed today that it was announced that you would be uh, a guest comedian at a fundraiser at the Tropicana in Atlantic City um, for victims of Hurricane Sandy. We've been talking about some very sober topics today. Sober, but it's also exciting, but sober topics, because there's a lot of serious stuff going on. But you, you are a comedian. You're a funny guy. Um, so it's wonderful that you're doing that charity work, trying to help people out, not just under the dome, but also um, down at the shore. But as a veteran assemblyman, as somebody who um, follows New Jersey politics and engaged to it as closely as anyone, how have you seen New Jersey politics change since Sandy a year ago? What's changed, at least at the beginning, is we, we needed each other similar to what happened after 9-11. At least for a significant period of time, you know, New Jerseyans looked at each other not as Republicans or Democrats, but just as New Jerseyans. And that's something that I would hope wouldn't fade away and that would grow. And I, what's changed here is the, is the belief that we are vulnerable and that we're not in charge of the earth. So consequently, people know that there's always a risk that something like that can happen again. So it opened uh, a wound that has somewhat healed, and a lot of healing has to be done. But I think it's placed all of us on notice that we're not in charge. And it's, <laughs> there's a higher authority. So hopefully we'll come together and stay together with that same spirit that occurred in Post Sandy. And, you know, we'll continue to be able to talk to each other as opposed to scream at each other. Assemblyman John Bramnick, Republican, Minority Leader in the State Assembly, representing portions of Union County. We really appreciate you once again taking a little time to fill us in on the status of the race. And you know that I mean it sincerely that I hope the next time we meet you're the presumptive speaker, um, not just the Minority Leader. You're doing a great job out there and we appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, opportunity and I'll speak to you November 6th. Thanks so much, Assemblyman. Take care, Matt. See you.